Hello art students, it's Sarah Farrington again. I am excited to bring you another studio tour. This one is all about art shows, getting ready for art shows, how artists get into art shows, and then how I install work once I have an art show ready to go. So I hope that you enjoy this one. If you have not seen the previous ones, you should definitely go check them out. And I hope you enjoy it. Showing your artwork is a very important part of being an artist, especially for an installation artist, because the whole artwork is about the experience of seeing it or being able to interact with it. Sometimes museums and galleries ask artists to apply for a show that has a theme called an open call. Or sometimes artists apply to a museum or gallery with an art show in mind called a proposal. And other times, museums or galleries reach out to artists that they know or have found for a show. Art shows are typically either group shows, where multiple artists show at the same time with a connecting theme. And other times, art shows are solo shows, which means just one artist displays their artwork. When I'm accepted into a show or a museum or gallery reaches out, I begin by discussing what the museum and gallery had in mind and the dimensions of the space. One of the first things I consider is whether more art will be shown in the space and whether I can or need to add paper to the walls. Next, I make a model using the dimensions of the space given to me, whether it be a whole room or a corner of a room. I create the model with cardboard or foam board, and I use grid paper to help make the model to scale, which means that the model is a much smaller version of the real room or space. Depending on the dimensions, one square of the grid paper equals either six inches or 12 inches. One important part of making these little models is seeing where doors or architectural details are, like if a wall extends out into a room or a door or a window is there. These architectural details are important for planning the installation that will come. Then I make tiny flat shapes that follow the scale of the model to see how much furniture I will need and how I might arrange it. Once sculptures are made and I'm in the space the gallery or museum has given me, I make changes when I'm in that room. But before then, I like to have a plan so I know what I need and how big it probably should be and where it may fit into the space. This model is for an art show in fall of 2020 at the Myrtle Beach Art Museum in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Because I'm just starting the planning process for this show, this model helps give me an idea of what I need to be working on before I go down to install the show in the fall. To see the importance of building a model before I create the actual installation, here is the model for the Alcott Gallery in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. You can also see the final installation and how similar the small model is to the way that the final installation looked in real life. After the model is created, I begin making any sculptures that I need. As you've seen in other videos like armature, geometry, paper, and process, sometimes sculptures begin with an armature, which is the structure underneath the paper, and sometimes the Sculptures don't need any structure underneath, and I just use paper. The final step, after many months of hard work and effort, it's time to install the artwork in the museum or gallery space. Or in this case, a store for children's clothes. This um, artwork was displayed at an event called Art Fields, which is in Lake City, South Carolina where the whole town participates in a really fun art event for a little over a week. And artwork could be displayed in people's stores or businesses, as well as gallery spaces around town. 
I start with the walls if the walls are going to be covered in paper. Um, this is the hardest part, I think. It takes the most time and it's difficult to get the paper on um, evenly and straight. Um, and it's hard not to damage the walls too much. After the walls um, have been papered, if they are going to be, then baseboards and crown molding are attached at the tops and bottoms of the walls to cover up the seams of paper. This is also a very time consuming part of the installation process. The next step is the rugs. Since rugs um, a lot of times have furniture on top, that needs to be the first thing that I put together before placing furniture into its location. This process takes a while too. I have multiple panels that make up one rug, so I have to put them together and then add a border that goes around, which sort of looks like the seam of the rug. Then it's time to start placing furniture. And sometimes this is tricky. Sometimes my plan from the model doesn't quite work out and I have to make adjustments. And sometimes things go pretty much how I thought it would. Um, after placing the furniture, it's time to add the accessories like lamps and uh, picture frames and um, then start placing the electrical outlets and light switches. So even though it looked really fast with the time-lapse videos, it took two days to install all of this artwork. And that's about 10 to 12 hours for each of those days. So it took over 20 hours to get all this ready to go for people to view at the Art Fields event in Lake City, South Carolina. Viewers were able to walk around the space where you see wood floor is where people could walk. They could get close to details like electrical outlets and switches and pillows and the carpet and see all of the details I put into the work. I hope that you enjoyed this week's studio tour and I hope that you will tune in for another one next week.